welcome back to Circulus. I am known by some as Aaron, some call me Mr. Smith, still others call me Crash, which is who I am tonight. I am DMing a homebrew campaign setting called Circulus, but while I have some familiar players with me tonight, I have some unfamiliar characters. We are doing a one-shot adventure. Uh, we have Eric and Tom with us. Um, Eric, how about you tell us who your character is? Um, I am uh, Synergy. I am using a, a mountain dwarf fighter today. His name is Vassal Mudspine. All right. And Tom, who are you playing? I am playing Bertha Beestinger, a hill dwarf monk. Okay. Wonderful. So to give us some backstory here, uh, we are currently setting up shop in the town of Husan which is a Dwarven settlement, very new. They, they haven't even really kicked the tires on the settlement yet. It's, they're sort of just moving in. It's only been around for 15 years. Um, and our two characters may or may not have come in with the first wave. They might have come in later. They might just be visiting. I'll let them decide on their backstories, but in either case, in any case... They may have gotten on the wrong side of the authorities. They, they, they may have, you know, maybe said something they weren't supposed to say or spilled someone's drink that started a bar fight or maybe were just in the wrong place at the wrong time and looked like that other dwarf. But in any case, they kind of got in a bit of trouble. And this is a settlement that is new enough. They don't really have an established jail, per se. Uh, the, the structure for the settlement is fairly unorganized. They're planning on you know, cleaning it up a bit after they've mined out more of the ore. But really what happens is if you get in trouble nowadays in Husan, what they'll do is they will hand you a pickaxe or a hammer and send you to one of the areas that are still being um, carved out. And they let you know when you're done. And that is what has happened to our good friends, Bertha and Vessel. Um, they've been in the equivalent of a chain gang, although there's no actual chains being used uh, for the better part of a day. Uh, they are not alone. There's a few other people a few other dwarves. Uh, this is a 100% dwarven settlement. They don't really take too kindly to outsiders, although in the main foyer area of Husan, there is a notable halfling who has set up shop um, that sells various mining supplies and stuff. He He's skilled with alchemical stuff, but he's been out of town for a couple of weeks. Um, give me a perception check. Let's see. Uh, character. Let's see. 19. Okay. So, Vassol is doing what your typical fighter might do when he's given a pickaxe and told, especially a dwarven fighter will do when given a pickaxe and told, here, make this room a bigger room. Um, he's doing his best to make the room a bigger room, and he's really focusing on the rocks. He, he, he's noticing various mineral deposits and stuff. He's, he's being your typical dwarf, which is fine. Um, Bertha, on the other hand, as a monk, has been trained in a lot more techniques than hit things with the tool to make the thing fall down. Um, she, in some cases, becomes one with the universe through the art of meditation and using of key energy. So she does notice the sound of glass rolling across the floor and looks down to see a straw, a small strange vial that has rolled over to a corner of this large room and it seems to have a liquid in it that if Punk was here <laughs> Punk would recognize oh boy <laughs> because he's thrown a lot of these vials actually he did was not. going to Yes. <laughs> if a certain dragonborn hadn't picked up the whole bag and thrown them all at once. 
but this <laughs> appears to be very similar. It's a clear glass vial. It's got a black liquid inside that you're fairly certain with your high perception check. Um, you're fairly certain that even if that glass vial wasn't rolling along the ground, the liquid inside would still be moving on its own. Mm. And you hear that sound in other parts of this room as well. So the, the sound of glass hitting the ground? The sound of glass rolling oh. in various directions. Uh, now make a dex save. Okay. Uh, let's see. 16. 17. You both passed. The magic number was going to be 15. Um, there is an explosion as this vial erupts. Boom. Um, there are multiple explosions in this room. Uh, rocks fall. Everyone dies. Game over. No. <laughs> Told you don't get too. Yeah. <laughs> and get that's too the game, everyone. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to us on iTunes. Actually, don't. iTunes is not updated since episode seven. <laughs> I do not know why. I submitted the ticket. They're not doing squat. I don't know. But in any case, um, your deck save allows you to sort of like duck and cover under things and shield yourself from the blast. Uh, I'm going to say you you are going to take some damage and get knocked unconscious, but you're not going to go splatter. Um, you do come to um, with a lot of rubble and a lot of other dwarves that are down. Um, they do not it, the two of you seem to be the only two that survived. Um, at least that are currently in the room now. Um, this is a very large room. Um, from where you are, you cannot see where you came in with your dark vision. I want to just look around and be like, what happened? I, I heard the sound of glass. Is it, uh, were we attacked? My ears are ringing. I have no idea. What? <laughs> uh, is, it, um, is there sm smoke in there or is it I, um, I apologize I'm proficient in athletics I don't know if that helped any uh, as far as to stave off any type of um, uh, d damage too much uh, when I when I when I you know got, got out of the way well let, let's put it this way I'm going to say you took damage from the debris and the explosion okay, you okay, were cool. unconscious long enough that it counted as a long enough rest for you to heal oh, okay very good thank you very much. so so you, you the you can tell you've been down for a while because you you know as dwarves that when there's that much ground that is disturbed it does fill the cave with various debris and particulate but that ha seems to have settled in the time you were unconscious. And there's a fine layer of it, um, in some places very sick, on you and the other dwarf bodies that are in this room. I got you. Okay. I'm going to just start walking around uh, just so... I mean, it's obvious that, the, that anyone laying on the ground is, is dead, or can we try to help them? Is there um, anything we can see in the... Not, like shadows, maybe, of an area to, to leave, or...? Well, with your dark vision, you don't really see shadows. Um, it, it's more like a black and white image. Yeah, that's what I meant. But, just um, like, uh, just something like we can, or we can at least know where we are in the room at least. Oh, you you know right where you you are. You were in the the far western end of it, and you know because you walked into this room uh, that there, if, if you walk towards it, there will be a door to. Sorry, you're in the eastern end. There will be a door to the west, and there's also a door on the southern wall. And they both lead into a passageway that, that goes around maybe 25% of this room, but then links up with other passageways and other rooms. I understand. Okay, gotcha. 
Um, now, as you're walking around and inspecting what's going on, you also do see um, a square of floor that seems to be out of place. It's kind of at an, an angle and leaning into a hole. And that was not there before the explosion. And you know an explosion wouldn't give you that even a square. Sure. Um, have, 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 yeah, can't talk. Have we, have our characters spoken to each other before that we'd know each other or just kind of random? We're in the same room together. Uh, well, you, you were working in this room for about eight hours. So a full shift. Okay. So okay. Th there was some small talk that went on. You two are relatively close to each other. It might be okay. the main reason you survived because while you heard the, that, those glass files rolling, they didn't roll under your feet. Okay. You, you were far okay. enough away that you weren't caught in the actual blast, but people around you weren't okay. so lucky. Um, okay. Do we want to go ahead and check out this little, uh, check this out, this little um, yeah. square? Yeah. What What is this? That's just weird. I didn't see that before there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is definitely covering a hole. Um, you can tell that it leads down into some type of passage, but most of this slab... it. You would almost call it a trap door, but there's no hinges on it. Hmm. Um, and and the sides of it are kind of the side. The, there seems to be some damage to this also, but it looks like when it was originally carved, the sides of it were sort of sloped, so that gravity would hold it down and in place without it falling through to the passage below. Um, but you can't really see much of the passage with this slab being in the way. Um, is it what's the, is it made of stone or metal it's, of anything? It's the floor. It it's okay. It looks like somebody carved a hole in the floor. Okay, okay. That's, I I, I want to check this out. Is there any other way? Is there any way to get out the other other um, the western door and the southern passage, or do we want to go straight through the bottom here? Um, from where you are now, I'm assuming you've walked over to this hole in the ground. Yes. Yeah. Um, from where you are now, your dark vision does allow you to see both of the other doors. They look like they're ajar and maybe not closable at this point. Uh, give me another perception check. Uh, this time it is a 14. 22 with a natural 20. Good lord! <laughs> I like this character. <laughs> <laughs> I like those dice. Yeah. That was superstitious. Uh, uh, Chris, in particular, would probably really love those dice, and he'd like <laughs> to ship them to him. This is, um, I just use the just use the D and D app. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, well, in any case, um, you can hear some distant sounds of fighting. You you think you'd be able to walk into that corridor through either door and not encounter actual fighting, but there are definitely there's definitely combat going on. You can hear mighty dwarven battle cries, and you also hear other cries that don't sound like they're coming from, from dwarven throats. Uh, I think this is something we need to get out of here. Let's go through yeah. this little passageway to see if we can get out of the skates. Yeah, I mean, we're... Which we're, passageway? We're, not the passageway, I'm sorry, the floor. Yeah, I mean, we're technically prisoners, but... Well, you, you've been working for Fellow eight hours. Fellow dwarves are being attacked. Your, your shift was about to be over before this okay. happened. All right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. yeah. I, I will follow along, trying to be as quiet as possible. Okay. Um, so this slab is still in the way. Let's go ahead and see if we can pick up the slab. Um, I don't know if I can use maybe an intelligence check to... Gen gentlemen first. <laughs> <laughs> to see if I'm I can find say, a better way to pick it up, maybe? I I'm, I'm going to say it would take a strength athletics check. Ha-ha! <laughs> I can do that! <laughs> that is going to be a 15 plus 6, so 23. Uh, no, 21. Sorry, I can't, I can't add to it. Um, the judges are giving it a 10. A 10, a 9.5, <laughs> a 9.7, and the Russian judge is giving it a 3. Damn you, Russia! 
and also made a hundred thousand Twitter accounts to talk about how you're <laughs> America. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so yeah, you, you you go over and and you uh, you tell me how you move this slab. I would like to you know get my hands around the sides where the uh, you know the if I can get my fingers in the creases and basically pull it up like I'm doing a deadlift. You do that easily, and you are holding it above your head like a deadlift champion. All right, I'm going to throw it to the side. Very impressive, sir. It makes a loud thump noise that reverberates through the, the chamber. And Damn a lot it, of I was trying to be quiet. Into the air. Well, we were trying to be quiet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I'm like, yeah, I lift it up so quickly, I just <laughs> fling it to the side. It I makes a massive down. noise. <laughs> Remember, be as stealthy as possible. Yes. I'm well, a fighter. I Boom. I'm just going to, to bring this boombox with me and play some death metal as we sneak. Look, intelligence of 10 or 11. What am I going to do? The intelligence of 11 is slightly above average. You are not a stupid person. I agree. All right. So let's let's uh, let's try and go down this. Pulls her nose at him like, be quiet. <laughs> let's go. So because you have been in Husan for a while, um, not long by Dwarven standards, but long enough to know the basics of Husan's structure, uh, you know that this tunnel is below the lowest carved out areas of Husan so far. There's There were some plans to go deeper, but they hadn't reached that point yet. Um, most of the effort was sort of digging horizontally into the mountainside as opposed to digging up or down uh, at this point. So this tunnel that you're looking d down into um, wasn't on the to-do list or wasn't high enough on the to-do list for, for this to be carved out by dwarves uh, anytime soon. And as you jump down, it's very obvious it wasn't done by dwarves because it's incredibly rough shod. Um, like, there, there's a seam right there. You just a few whacks of the pickaxe, and that would have just fallen away. There was no reason that you would try to go around the other way and do more work. You, yeah. My amateurs. Friend, this friend, this is amateur work. Yeah, is what you're looking at here. Yeah. Um, and the amateurs that were doing the digging apparently are underfoot. Um, quite literally. Um, because apparently one of those glass files that they were throwing somehow bounced back in. Oh, no. Um, oh. So, uh, one of the explosions was also probably why this square was off kilter, allowing you to see this passageway oh, to man. begin with, because it got pushed back up again uh, when it went off. And th there's, there's a fine layer of organic material lining this particular passageway. Anything specific we can determine? Uh, give me a... I'm going to say a nature check. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything nature? No, so let's roll. I have nothing in nature. Um, five. <laughs> Seven. I, I'm totally forgetting what a nature check would be. For which uh, stats it, I'm looking Intelligence, at. maybe? I want to say that. It's intelligence, yeah. I, I'm also loading up my list so I don't have to stop and wonder that next time. Okay. So, um, yeah, you failed that roll horribly. Um, Bertha, what was your roll? <laughs> Seven. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you, you know it was... It had blood in it. <laughs> and you're fairly Ew, certain... Ew, I'm not touching that. <laughs> and, and you're fairly cer certain that it also had bones. Ugh. Uh, because you see some fragments. But beyond that, there's not really much identifiable. Um, you're going to have to wait a few hundred years for DNA testing to be available. <laughs> and let me just hit a button on this map here. Because now, our viewers at home... And I should probably say this for the recording. Um, I've put the maps directly into OBS, which is the software I'm using to record this. So if you're listening to the audio-only version... You might actually want to stop by YouTube and look at that just so you can see 
the maps because I'm keeping track of where the party goes in OBS. So that'll be kind of neat and involves less editing on my part. So you are in what appears to be the tail end of a passageway that sort of meanders not really in a straight line, but mostly south. And there's really only, if you choose to go down this way, there's only one way to go at this point. Um, unless you choose to go back up again. The the, the cavern, um, this unnatural cavern, which is very rough cut, again, amateur work, um, is about four feet high. So as dwarves go, you're, you're feeling pretty comfortable in here. Um, Height-wise, you would be able to climb back up if you wanted to, even though there's no ladder or anything. Um, I think we should just keep on going south. Yeah. All right, we're going to follow the passage. Uh, are we still having the issue with the light? Are there any type of uh, lanterns or anything down here, or is it just... Um, if you weren't dwarves, you'd be having trouble, but you both have dark vision for 60 feet, if I remember okay. correctly. Yes, yeah. sir. So for 60 feet, you've got some pretty good vision. Your vision is actually limited more by the t twists and turns of this passageway than by the maximum range of your ability to see in the dark. Do we hear any uh, any more noises? Sounds of fighting is louder as we go this way? That is a very good question. I'm going to say give me another perception check. All righty. Better, 20. Uh, that's an 18 plus 2. 10. I'm in a, I'm in a tunnel. <laughs> Well, e even with a 10, you think you can hear some stuff in the distance. Um, but uh, Vassal's role lets him understand that what he's hearing is mostly coming from above rather than in this tunnel itself. Okay. So gotcha. far as combat sounds are concerned, um, you think you do hear some scraping sounds further down the passageway, but you're not sure how far down. Let's keep on going down this path. Yeah. Okay. I get to move your character. There we go. All right. So as you continue down this passageway, you've gone for about maybe um, 70 feet or so, give or take. When you encounter um, another square in the ceiling... Um, and there is some light coming down through it. It is open. And there are some strange lizard-like creatures that seem to be sort of half sliding, half pushing dwarven bodies into the passageway. And they have these um, litters that they're sort of trying to pile them on and drag. Um, I want to try to be stealthful. Kind of well, back. I'm going to need a stealth check from both of you. All right. I'm about to freak this up. Did, last time we did this, didn't I get roll a one? I'm just starting <laughs> out uh, I believe it wasn't that you rolled a one. It was that you chose to throw a heavy slab of stone. <laughs> Actually, this is cool. Uh, 17 plus 118. Yeah, I got a 17. Okay, so they do not hear you as you are sneaking down the passageway. But th there's there's no tributaries going off at this yeah. point. Um, the only way through is to either go up and around or go through these guys. I gesture at them and just kind of shrug and be like, I, I think... Because that seems like that, that might be the way out of here. And this is above us as far as... Yeah. The, or this is um, continuously through the passage. Uh, there's about three of them in the passage, but you hear sounds from the other side of the hole, so you know there's some up there also. All right, so what do we want to try and take these guys out, or do we want to just continue, see if we can kind of get get around them? Uh, That'd be as quiet as possible, though, if we're going to take these guys out. Yeah, um... So there's 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 a couple of them, or how, how many is there? Well, I guess like how many are close to us? You can see three. You know there's more, 
Okay. But there's only three that are in this passage that you can lay eyes on. Now, as far as weaponry, we still have the pickaxes, correct? Or we those kind of dropped and we're just unarmed? I, I'm assuming that you took the pickaxes with you because yeah, yeah. It, it you you were going through a carved out passage after there was a huge explosion and you are dwarves. That's true. Yeah. Uh, that'd be the equivalent of a small child bringing their blanket with them when they think there might be a monster in the closet. It, it's <laughs> it's fairly standard operating procedure. I think if we can if we can try to take these guys out without them raising an alarm. I say, let's go for it. All right, let me grab this real quick. So, I I would like to uh, maybe try to approach them using stealth. I know I'm not a rogue to try to get you know some kind of advantage. Or uh, would we have an op uh, an attack of opportunity? Like, um. You passed your stealth check, so I'm going to say that if you want to run forward, unless you yell a battle cry in the process, you could probably <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you, you could probably get an attack of opportunity on these guys because they have not um, seen you yet. You passed your stealth check. Okay, um, I'm probably better off using the unarmed strike, honestly, because um, it's pretty much well. She has skill with a short sword. So I don't know if that would, uh, but pretty much like stat wise, I mean, it's, if, if you, if you let me use it as a short word, I'd, I'd do slightly more damage, but I don't, that, that's your call. Um, I would not let you use a pick as a sword pretty much just okay. because it's an entirely different shape. Right, right, right. So I'm probably better off just using the unarmed pick and run up and just try to kick one of these guys and then like in the... I guess their backs to us. Um, the, they don't all have their backs to you, but they are preoccupied with trying to load dwarf corpses onto these litters. Okay, I want to run up and uh, try to kick at one of these guys. While okay. he's doing that, I want to kind of like try and get the other person, another one that's that's uh, not the person, but another one that's uh, occupied, so maybe I can hit it also uh, with an unarmed strike as well. Now you're not going to use a pick. I'm trying to find the stats for a pick, and I can't find one. Um, the miner's pick doesn't seem to have stats for damage, but there is a thing called a war pick. Yeah, I saw that one. Uh, and, and for the sake of expediency, I'm not going to nitpick it. I'm just going to say we're going to use those stats. Okay. It, the damage for that seems kind of high, but you've been practicing breaking stone apart with this thing <laughs> i imagine that it's also fairly skill skillful with breaking apart skulls okay plus that's the, good that's plus good, the killing that... dwarves so because that gives me stats rage. and damage all right cool <laughs> all right i want to kind of do these kind of at the same time yeah as stealthy yeah as so i rolled a 17 that is a uh, definite hit i rolled a 12 plus 6 is 18 That is also a hit. Give me some okay. damage. Okay, one d four plus two. Four. Seven. Okay, so Vassol definitely kills his Gopald, but I'm gonna have you tell me how you do it. <laughs> Okay, so what I'd like to do is, uh, in the, the the way I basically hit him is, I'd kind of like to bring the pick up from the back over around my shoulder and kind of come down like like I'm really gonna hit uh, a, a a really good node like from the top down at a, at a ninety degree uh, angle going straight down. Like you're a dwarf in World of Warcraft that's mining some ore in the game. Correct, but I'm putting I'm putting my weight around it, kind of like uh, kind of like a baseball swing, but just uh, my baseball swing. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm throwing a baseball pitch, but the, oh. uh, the uh, it's it's a it's a pickaxe instead of a ball. Okay, um, so you, you you do this, and the pick goes right through this thing's skull and out the other side. Oh, wonderful! Um, now, Bertha 
is really good at being sneaky and hearing things. Um, and she's also really good at kicking. Um, but this, her particular opponent, uh, when she kicks it, it sort of bounce, it rebounds off of the wall. Mm -hmm. But then lands in front of the wall, still standing, and the wall is close enough that this kobold is still within attack range. Um, it, it it doesn't look like it appreciated the experience. Um, <laughs> it it looks like if 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 required to rate the experience, uh, it would give it a very low ranking um, on Travelocity or any of those other sites. Uh, it, it it does not want to see that happen again. Uh, it looks a little dazed, but it's still standing. All right. And there's that third one. And I introduced them as lizard-like creatures because your characters, being native of Circulus, don't know what kobolds are, but let's face it, they're kobolds. Um, there's that third kobold is standing there, and I think it's about time to roll for initiative. All right. Eighteen. Sorry. Seventeen. All right, so I have recorded initiative, and it looks like after you killed one and a half kobolds, you get to go again. Woo! Um, look, I'm gonna, he's gonna be working on that one. I wanna look for the other, um, the other kobold. Am I in attack range of that one? Oh yeah, they were all three right next to each other. They, they were, um, they were in the situation where they were putting, y y have you ever gone camping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you go out to get deadfall firewood and, and you have to weigh your options between making more than one trip or carrying <laughs> a lot more yeah, than I got you it. should carry. They've been trying to do this with these dwarf corpses where um, as you were sneaking forward, they were like putting the body on top and they would roll off. Then they try to put it on top again because they really don't want to have to take two trips. <laughs> yeah. So th they were entirely focused on that and all three of them were like, they're, there was one on one side that was pushing it back up over the other side and the other two would be on the other side pushing it back up over the other side. Um, each one thought they were helping. Um, but, but really all it was doing was making you angrier so for this attack the other one i came out like a like a baseball throw I, well the the axe is now below me kind of below my waist now i want to kind of swing up um kind of like a highlight I don't, I don't know if you know what highlight is but there is a, a little a mitt that you use looks like a looks like an extension of the arm and it's scooping up and i want to try and scoop up so let me go ahead and roll almost like a golf swing yeah kind of like that so th this can work because as as you put the pickaxe through the skull of the first cobalt it went down obviously your pickaxe fell through because as any good dwarf fighter knows you don't swing with the intention to connect you swing like you're going to miss because then you have a better follow through correct and you don't hesitate with your hit so your pickaxe went down from that first attack, your surprise round, and now you're just going to reverse the swing, and the other point on the back end of the pickaxe is going to be what you're using to go up under this thing's chin. Correct, and I rolled a 12 plus 6, that's 18. That is a hit, give me some damage. Same damage, 7. Um, we have two dead kobolds in this cavern. Um, Bertha, would you like to bring that up to three? I would. Now that the uh, the kobolds noticed her, she's just going to give it just kind of a, a polite nod, uh, and then she's going to try to punch it in the face. Okay, and it has a sizable face, considering that its head looks kind of like an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so give me a, an attack roll. All right. Uh... Sorry. 14. That. You know, I. For most of these attacks, I've just been saying, well, that's so high, it's definitely a hit. But now I actually got to look up the armor class for these things. Um, yeah, that's a hit. Is okay. that a Cobalt's 12, I think? Yes, it is. 
Well, these cobalts are. Not all cobalts are AC 12. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Five damage. Um, especially with the previous damage that you've done, um, this is sufficient to kill it. Would you like to explain how you you uh, martial arts your way to this thing's demise? Yeah. Uh, nod, and then uh, punched it straight in the. Uh, I guess they have a jaw. Oh. A lizard thing, so that its head slammed back against the wall. Okay, so it's it's not necessarily your punch that it's caving its skull, and it's the wall. Yes. Wonderful. So and she it, kind of just wipes her hand off on her. It's called u- good use of surroundings. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you are not fighting me, but the environment. <laughs> Correct. And, and and now there's a red stain on this part of the wall also to match the it, it's sort of like you build up a sense of unity if you have red in one room you want to have red in another room also to sort of like give visitors the feeling that they're in the same location it's all part yeah. of this you don't want them to have to walk from one room to another and then wonder if they're in the same house or not um and i realize that these are red rooms red room red room red room, red room. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it is now the kobold's turn. Okay. Wait. Um, now the ones, that, the ones that were down below oh. don't really <laughs> have much that they can do at this point other than decompose. We made a little bit of noise. Whoops. Yeah. Um, there are others that are above. And if they were mighty powerful fighters, they would probably jump down and engage you in hand-to-hand combat. However, they are skinny little lizard men who are canonically cowards. So they're going to stay up there and throw slings at you. They sling stones at you, actually. All right. Um, let's see. That's a miss no matter what you're wearing for armor. Um... Vassal, what's your AC? 17, sir. 17? Yeah, I have chainmail. I don't know if you want me to use it or not. That's why I asked if you want me to keep it keep it on. Uh, or if you wanted me to, to, uh, to just de- take the, keep the weapons, and you said take the weapons, so I kept the armor. And the, the hard labor was um, as a punishment, but they weren't trying to embarrass <laughs> you. So okay. they weren't p- planning on taking your armor. Uh, what, what, um, when, when you did whatever you did to, to have to do the actually in an 8 hour shift that's light labor that's nothing um, not for a dwarf anyway uh, so yeah you're still wearing the chain armor I'm, yeah. I'm just in, impressed that it's that high never mind yeah um, 17 sorry okay and one of them is going to throw a sling stone at Bertha Bertha what's your AC 14 that is a hit ah <sighs> I'm not using my cleric's name. Holy <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be healing you. SOL. So. You might have to I... burn a lot of short rests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can second win myself. I can't second win yeah. you. Uh, that is four points of damage. All right. The stone hits you right between the eyes. The, there like is a teams. point when, when monks gain the ability to re reduce damage from missile attacks. I don't know what level that is. I know you'll have it by third level if you live that long. <laughs> um, if I live that long, right? Because in the opening in the in the first episode of C Team, they started at third level and Rosie Beastinger uses this ability. Yeah. If you reduce the damage to zero, then what happens is you catch the missile weapon and you can throw it back as a ranged attack. Which is fun. Yeah. Okay, but that was their turn. So you got three stones flew down. So you're assuming there's three cobalts up there. So we would have to jump out of the hole to be able to attack. That'd be a full attack, probably. That Uh. that would. um, Well, the the tunnel is low enough to the ground that because it was built for cobalts and dwarves are roughly the same height, maybe a little bit taller. Um, 
so you you'd be able to climb with a successful strength check i'd say that would just be your movement it wouldn't be your movement and attack could i could i try to use acrobatics to jump out um i i would allow that sure how okay. about athletics for me either or you're either doing a pull up or you're doing a flying leaping kicking off the side of the wall or something all right yeah. athletics check was an 18 plus 6 24 uh, you don't just climb up, you shoot up like a cannon shot and, uh, and land on the edge of, of this passageway and the kobolds are really not happy with this change of events. 17? Um, you do exactly what I said. You, you sort of like jump, uh, you do a uh. somersault, you kick off the wall, <laughs> you kick off the side of the hole in the, in the ground, you do another somersault, then you land with one toe on a pebble that is sitting on the ground. <laughs> she and has one hair. She has one hair out of place, so she's going to brush that back. So <laughs> appearances, you, you, you gotta, you gotta stay on brand. Is what you got to do. Okay, so yeah, so that was your movement, but you all both now have attacks. Uh, do I? Do we have to roll initiative again, or keep the same one? It's the same initiative. It's the same combat. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're just gonna swing one, kind of like a, just a uh, uh, swing the pickaxe, kind of like sideways to the nearest one that I I can get to. Okay. Um, it's a seven plus six, so thirteen. That is a hit. Gotta keep on rolling threes. Uh, seven, please. That is a kill. How do you? Oh, you already described how you're killing this one. So yeah, just, just it's just a simple raw side, stuff so from the side, like kind of like, like a tennis swing. Okay. You, you you've killed enough kobolds with this pickaxe. You you are starting to think about maybe naming it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's another one down. Do that from. <laughs> I, I, I want to keep saying punk, but it's not punk. It's Bertha. Oh. Bertha, what are you doing? She is going to try to do a a, a roundhouse kick at uh, one of the kobolds. Okay, give me an example. And let's see, sixteen plus four, twenty. Uh, well, not a natural, but let's no. go with it. Give me some damage. All right. Five. That is enough to kill it. Is there any particular part of its anatomy you were aiming for? Uh, it's head. Okay. So it, its head snaps back from the force of the blow, and there is an audible snapping noise. Nice. And then it falls backwards like a felled tree. There is one remaining kobold, and it is going to um, use this moment to disengage. Because it just saw what you did, and it wants no part of it. So I want to try to throw my pickaxe at it. Uh, it is oh, check that out. So oh, unless you have another it. attack, um, oh. it, it, it is All not right. invoking attack, attacks of opportunity. Uh, this okay. particular room you are in um, is not one you've been in before. You know it's obviously close to the previous one because you didn't go south very far. It's got two doors to the north, and it runs towards the closest one, which is on the eastern side. And it slams the door behind it, and you hear its feet scampering off. I'll say, sir, can we, can we take a short break? I have what? And I'll kind of show him the knot between my eyes. Yeah, we could take a short break. I'll, ex I'll examine the, the knot between the eye and then go, ooh. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so with that, could we take a short rest? Or is that not capable right now? Um, you can try to take a short rest. Okay. Uncoming! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tried. It turns yeah. out the ground is a mimic. 
Yeah, we can take a short short rest. That's fine. Okay. Okay. And oh, I forget the rules for short rests and how that works with replenishing hit points. You can burn a hit die, I believe, but I don't know what the exact numbers are, so I'm going to look it up. Um, a short rest is a period of downtime, at least one hour long, during oh, the boy. character does not um, does nothing strenuous, eating, drinking, reading, whatever. Um, you hour. get you get your uh, hit die. It's um, you roll a hit die plus whatever your bonuses are, and it's only one. Yeah, we don't we don't got time for that. We gotta we gotta keep moving. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that sounded good. I didn't know it took an hour. So <laughs> let's just keep going then. Okay, so, so his he he went through the eastern door or the western door up like the the he, it's the north door, the but one he on went the, the eastern. East. It was the closest one to where you you were with that hole in the ground. Okay, um, and he wanted to get out of line of sight as quickly as he could. Apparently, um, and I'm assuming the western door is also the, there's a there's a passage of the western and it's a closed by a western door also. Uh, both doors are sort of not in good shape it looks like they tried the same trick in this room as the room you'd been in with explosive vials um both of them lead to passages we want to go ahead and follow that guy right there yeah yeah all right so let's go ahead and follow the door is the door closed if it is i want to kick it kick it open because kicking open doors is what i do okay well give me a <laughs> strength athletics check it's the need that for quad that, sir, is a 21. Oh. Okay, so this door <laughs> The need opens... for subtlety has passed. <laughs> <laughs> this door opens in, not out, but that doesn't seem to matter. It opens out now. Um, well, I would it, like it, to pose also when I kick the door. It opens out once. Stand in mid-kick. And then it falls down because it bounced off of the far wall. Um, but you are in a path that you recognize because this is one of the two ways that you can take to get into the room that you were in originally when the attack started. Uh, you, you can, from where you are right now, you can see one of the doors that would lead into Maybe that. Maybe just check the stats there. for a door. <laughs> door stats. Uh, armor class. Uh, 22. No, you are horrible with that. You break the, your leg in twain. <laughs> Rocks these fall, doors, everyone dies. <laughs> These doors were close enough to explosions that I'm gonna say that they have fewer hit points in the cobalt. Yeah, I think we might have lost them. Oh, I I had OBS in the front again, so. I oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the, the, these doors have fewer hit points in the cobalt because they they barely survived explosions. Like the, the, there's hinges that are are still going through the motions of being hinges, but they they kind of don't work as hinges properly anymore. Um, so you are in a passageway that if you continue going north and a little bit to the east, but not by much, you'll be back where you started, or you can go west. I think we want to get out of here. Yeah. Um, but you know, there, there's always, I don't know, I have, I have a feeling as a, as an adventurer and a fighter, there's always, always room to kind of delve just a little bit deeper. What do you think? I want to get out of here. Okay, okay. You got to get out of here. Okay, let's get out of here. Punk would be thirsty for blood. <laughs> let's just track them all down and slaughter them. Uh, but Bertha is. Uh, let's let's just let's just get out of here. Well, see, my honor, my my uh, my bonds are my honor is my life, and um, they've defa defiled my honor. So I want to get all sorts of crazy revenge. And he's not no, dead I'm, yet, so I'm, 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 my character is going to fight you a little bit on that. All right, she'll just follow. She's not going to argue with that. <laughs> okay, so she's so lawful way, neutral, so for whatever that means. So, so it means you're going to follow the law, but you don't really care who's in charge. That works. Um, <laughs> follow, uh, lead on, sir. Okay, so which way are you heading? We're going to go to the west, western western door. West, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there's, there's no door to the west in this passageway. It's passageway it's goes, the western the side of the northern okay. northern area. Uh, you get to the end of this passageway. It doesn't go for very far. Um, and then it turns north. Now, you know, because you're dwarves, 
um, that most of this complex is to the south of you. You're actually in the northeastern edge of everything that's involved here. Um, but you also know that it's sort of a, a, a rat's nest or a maze of passageways. They were really following the easiest ways to dig out as they were trying to make space for more dwarves to come in and kickstart the settlement. Um, but this passageway is going... You, you recognize this particular tunnel. You know it's going to go north and have another door to your starting point. But it is also um, going to have another passageway that goes west and then north and south and east and west and whatever. But this is the correct way. If you want to stay on the main settled area, this is yeah. the way out. Okay. okay. There might have been others, but you haven't you haven't been in every tunnel. And you don't have a working memory of every tunnel. Okay, I'm assuming you bypass going back into the starting room. So yes. now you are you have reached a point where you could go north more, and you haven't gone that way. So you don't know if it's going to do a U-turn or not. Or you can take a passage to the west and you see a door there. Um, or you, or it also turns south. So the, if you go west, you can go north to a door or south to a passage that turns. Could I make a perception check to listen to more sounds of a combat? Oh, uh, you certainly can. Uh, 17. Every now and then you think you hear a noise, but you're, you're not sure if it's still combat. Okay. So it might be over. I'm going to head more north or head west? Uh, where do I hear the sound coming from? You can't tell. Okay. Uh, north. North it is. Okay. Um, so you go north through the passes that you haven't been through before. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to move this map in OBS. <laughs> okay, so I moved the map. Um, the passageway does indeed make a U-turn. Uh, it has many twists and turns, uh, mostly at right angles. Um, and it does come up to another door in the southern wall at one point when it's heading to the west. So you can go through this door or you can continue to follow this meandering tunnel. Let's check out the door. But maybe I want to go up and listen at the door first before someone kicks it in. <laughs> what? You don't want to kick it in? <laughs> no, no. He, 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 he did use the word before. Before, yes. Which means okay, it is okay. assumed. <laughs> Wait, we're going to wave him off, and I'm going to just quietly go up and put my ear to the door, what's maybe behind and, it. And that is when Vassal kicks it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to open up a jar of queso for my wife while I was laughing. <laughs> it worked out very well. <laughs> well, I guess there's no door to listen at. So. <laughs> yeah, let's listen to the door. After you, sir. <laughs> Okay, so give me a perception check, since you're listening. Uh, six, uh, 18, sorry. Oh, gosh. Uh, 8. Um, okay, so I'm going to RP this as Vassal being more interested in getting a running start to kick this door <laughs> than actually trying to listen. Uh, Bertha's the one with her ear to the door itself, and she hears a dripping sound on the other side, but otherwise hears nothing. Just tell me when. I step aside. <laughs> After you, sir. Uh, that is a 13. Um, so the good news is you kick the door open. The bad news is, um, Isaac Newton was a brilliant man. And he taught us that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's why I got out of the way. 
So you go backwards. Uh, give me a dex save. Okay. Uh, well, not not Bertha. Bertha was out of the way. Vassal yeah, gave yeah, me a yeah. dex save. Oh, okay. All right. okay. One. Ah, uh, 19 plus one, 20. Okay, so you sort of like hop on one foot and you go backwards a few feet, keeping your balance, but uh, you weren't expecting the door to give that easily, and then you sort of slap yourself on the forehead and go, oh, wait, these doors open inward. <laughs> <laughs> Could try opening it. Rather than... <laughs> so, what? so you were a bit off balance, but, but you're okay now, and there are no combatants that are standing inside this room. It's much smaller than than the previous rooms you've been in, um, but it has a familiar square hole in the floor, um, and there are several bodies. It doesn't look like anything's come in to try to clear this particular room out yet. Um, and the sound of, that you're hearing that's dripping is a puddle of blood that is near the this hole in the ground, where the the blood is slowly dripping down into the, the cavern beneath. Uh, these creatures. This is. Yeah. I think this is how they've been accessing our 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 tunnels. Anything around here we can find, like weaponry or anything? Uh, well, the corpses are all dwarven. What weapons would you like? <laughs> uh, a weapon that I love. Uh, a, um, a battle axe. Um. I'm just gonna roll a die. Yeah, I'm gonna say you find a battle axe. Any shields around by any chance? Um, you, you're not happy with its quality, but you're fairly certain that the door, what's left of it, uh, would make a, a usable shield. I can work with that. Um, do I? I'm gonna look at the dwarves. Do I, do I recognize any of them? Um, I'm going to say that check will be um, investigation or perception. And see, here's the thing: perception is my go-to for most checks, and I'm my personal goal one of them as a dm is to have players do more than just perception checks for the entire game <laughs> so i it's fun when when i when you ask for something where it's going to require a skill check of some kind i really <clears throat> want the opportunity to say roll something else <laughs> um, animal handling is is with the first thing my eyes caught, and I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going to agree with you. Investigation is probably okay. the best choice. Here. Stop being lame, Tom. <laughs> Fourteen. Um, they look kind of familiar, but not all of them have their entire head intact. Uh, so it, it's hard to tell for sure. And you, I just you're, you're not you're not gonna be that that girl because you're playing a female dwarf. Uh, you're not gonna be that girl that says all dwarves look alike. <laughs> but um, these dwarves look very much alike. Well, they're my people, so she's gonna just kind of just say maybe a small prayer under her breath and just sit. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. Fifteen? That is good enough. So as you're saying a prayer to Mariah, who is the local deity of these dwarves, um, not just the locals, since this is a new settlement, they, they, like most places that create new settlements or colonies, brought their deity with them. Um, so... Moriah exists in other Dwarven communities as well. Um, but as you're saying this prayer to Moriah, who is guardian of the lost, uh, the lost dwarves, if you will. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I like obscure references and not so obscure references as well. Um, 
you hear someone say, because you're not making up a prayer. You're saying one of the standard ones yeah, yeah. that they teach you in Little Dwarf School. Um, <laughs> and one of the dwarves that's on the ground is saying the prayer with you. Not very loud, not very well, but they're kind of conscious. Oh, then I'll go down, kneel down, and try to talk to them. Okay. Um, who, what? Who's Are you all right? Um, you don't need a perception check or a medicine check to know this dwarf is not all right. Um, you're, you're fairly certain that, um, unless tended to, he will die of his wounds. Darn, I know I should have brought it to Cleric. Oh. <laughs> we we well, left the Cleric could, in the other game, so... You, you could do a medicine wisdom check to see if you can bind yeah. his wounds. There's plenty of cloth scraps and stuff in this room. Yeah, uh, but he, he's that. bleeding out. Okay. Uh, Punk would put him out of his misery. Um, Punk uh, would try. <laughs> Actually, Punk would probably just walk away. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I could make a medicine check to see if I could help him, but uh, maybe just grip his hand and, you know, say something about, you know, you'll be with the ancestors soon and, you know, I don't know. I'm not ready to go. <laughs> not dead yet. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> You're stone dead in a minute. Uh, all right, I'll no make a cart. Apparently, the Dragonborn <laughs> came through the other day and smashed them all. Oh, well, all right. I, I personally would like to try and bind his wounds. I, you know, I, I go ahead, Eric. I mean, I personally would like to try and see if I can find something to kind of help him out just a little bit. I mean, you know, Lord knows he would want to be able to at least fight for his life. Um, that would be a medicine of... wisdom check. And there, there's plenty of his wounds are mostly like he looks a little singed. But it's mostly, like, shrapnel that has injured this dwarf. Gotcha. Um, um, I don't have anything in modifications, but I rolled a 17. There, there's plenty of scraps of fabric um, on the corpses and various detritus that's in this room. So you're, you're able to make some, some rough, um, for want of a better word, tourniquets. Uh, and, and bandages where there there might be some infection going on. He might want to see a cleric after a while, but he, um, unless someone comes in to finish him off, at this point you're fairly certain, especially with the Dwarven Constitution, um, that he'll live long enough to have to worry about infection. Okay, good. I'd, I'd like to make a medicine roll uh, as well. Okay. See if I can help. Uh, 21. He is definitely stabilized. Okay. Um, Can we maybe try to help him to his feet? Uh, he definitely needs help getting to his feet. He doesn't look like he'd be able to walk very well. Um, okay. one, one of the wounds that you bound was um, his right knee. That appears to be arrow-shaped. Let's just see um, if we can go ahead and keep him in a couple of <laughs> <laughs> he won't be an adventurer much longer. <laughs> Let's see if we can get him stable at least. You're welcome. Once we get out of here, we'll go ahead and if <laughs> if we get out of here, we'll go I ahead. Rem and... I remember reading something, and I have no idea if it's true or not. So I might be spreading some fake news. But I remember reading something about how taking an arrow to the knee was actually a slang or euphemism for getting married. I've so never heard that. All, all the guards you you talk to in Skyrim, if, if this is true, are pretty much saying I was adventure but adventurer like you, but then I settled down and had a family. <laughs> so I came up with an excuse, yeah. <laughs> Which I like to think sounds true because if you're in a medieval setting and you take an arrow to the knee, that's not something that's going to leave you with a leg where you can walk around and do guard duty. Like, you're going to have a cane permanently. Even, yeah. even in today's age of modern medicine, you're probably going to have a limp on cold days or wet days. I didn't say they were chasing anybody. 
Well, <laughs> they, they, apparently in Skyrim they'll chase you if you do something really stupid. Yes, they will. But but just put a bucket over their head and they won't notice. <laughs> just don't kill a chicken. Or... Well, something. Like, well, then the chickens will. Oh wait, no, that that that's Legend of Zelda. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so um, so he he sort of is able to prop himself up, and there's plenty of because you're all dwarves, so there's plenty of weapons lying around there. He's able to use like a mace as a walking stick. Okay. I want to uh, take him along with us. Of hobble. Okay. What? You want to take him along? I gotta watch your butt, and I gotta watch him too. Good lord! We can't just leave him here. He's alive. You would leave a fellow dwarf to die. No, but now we have to change tactics, and we actually have to get him out of here. So let's go ahead and co go back to where we were, so we can see if we can get him out of this area. Punk's much easier to work with. So I know. While, while you're arguing, the dwarf is hobbling towards the the eastern door of this room. Do we? Uh, do uh, I want to ask the dwarf if he, if he knows a, a good way to get out of here, or, he, or is he kind of like us, um, kind of like going along as as we are? Just try to keep up. He's going through the door already. What's right, your name, he, he sir? He did not kick it in. The name's Montgomery. Montgomery. Of the Burns family? <laughs> I don't know any Burns. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, I'm a, I'm a I'm Vasol, and that chick over there is whatever. Let's go. Let's see if we can Burns get out of here. I'll follow you. I do not we'll, like being we'll called behind chick you. either. <laughs> Sir. Okay, so it turns out that as he goes through that door to the east, it is a very familiar passageway. You apparently been going in circles. Oh. Um it so that that option where you could go to the west or go north and you chose to go north, if you'd gone west you'd have seen this dwarf earlier. Oh, man. But he so chooses to go south, which was another option. Which, if you remember, the DM earlier said that most of this complex is to the south. All right, let's go south. Okay, so um, it becomes very obvious very quickly that if you don't stop to bicker, he is clearly the slowest member of the party. Um, Fun. Like, really slow. Like, check out line on Black Friday slow. <laughs> DMT right. slow. Well, while, while he's walking, I'll, I'll see if I can um, kind of help him with his leg injury. Kind of help him pick him up and let's see if we can go a little faster. Um, he acts like He pretty much tries to slap you away every time you come over and try to help him. Uh, it's it's incredibly embarrassing for, for you to try to help him. He his, he took some serious injuries, but it, it was a, a critical success against his pride. I'm um, just I'm playing my character with the with the personality that I have. Like I'm ready to. It's time to go. It's time to get there. And I get I'm trying to get him not not overly being anal, but I'm slightly being anal to get him going faster. Oh, oh yeah, and I, I totally understand your motivation. Um, however, his motivation is he's going to get out of this place on his own two legs even if it kills him. Okay, I understand. Um, Montgomery, quit being so stubborn. Let us help you. He's a freaking dwarf. So am I. <laughs> oh, wait. So that pretty much means you're at an impasse. Well, let's keep on going. All right, all right. Keep, keep, keep up if you can. We tried to help you. Okay. Stubborn old dwarf. So this passageway continues um, back past another familiar room. Um, remember when you could take in the... There were two doors to the north, and one was on the east, and one was on the west? Yeah. Yeah, you go past the one to the west. You could have bypassed all of this. We wouldn't have made our new friend then, otherwise. This is true. Um, unless, unless this is one of the encounters that the, the DM added specifically and, and decided <laughs> you to fight him in any room. But there is also the possibility 
that this is an encounter that the DM added because he realized that it's getting kind of late and you got to find your way out of here. Yep. <laughs> um, and the DM isn't going to tell you which it is. Uh, this passageway continues to go south. It meets up with another passageway. Um, and Montgomery keeps going, keeps going. It turns left, it turns right, it turns up, it turns down. You put your left foot in, you pull your left foot out. I will shake it all about. What if the hooky pokey really is what it's all about? The world may never know. You do the hooky pokey. These thoughts keep me up at night. No, they don't. Okay, so you come up to um, another intersection. Um, and it's a very short passageway to the south that branches left and right. Um, and you see that one way leads to a door. Um, but you could also choose to go west. And Montgomery sort of stops and he, he, he sort of hesitates and looks left and looks right. Um, the looking to the right is a little weird because it's wall to the right. So you have to go south more. Um, and he sort of like puts his finger in his mouth to lick it and he sort of like checks the, the, the currents. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, 21. 14. Okay, so... Um... Vassol, you know that there is no reason to be checking air currents right now. He's stalling for time because he doesn't know which way to go from here. Look, man, I know you're stuck. Now we gotta just wing it. Um, it's, it's not that I know where we are. I, I'm not. I'm doing the voice wrong. I, I know where we are, but, but I don't know which way would be an easier route right now. What are we talking about? Easier route? What's in the? What's in between? Uh, what's we? What's what's between us and the exit? Oh, I don't know. That's kind of the problem. But if we if we go more to the west, we'll we'll get to the main hallway faster. But it's wide open. If, if those things aren't there, we'll be okay and have a straight run to the exit. If we go the other way, we'll eventually get to the main hallway further south, closer to the exit, but we might have to travel a longer distance. Uh, my character is all about getting there as simple as possible, so the closest way is what my character would choose. Uh, yeah, Earth will just... I'd be like, let's just let's just get out of here quickly. We'll deal with any creatures if we have to. How are you feeling, Bertha? You ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and head the. Let's suggest to this person, this uh, dwarf, that we want to go the simplest way. Okay, so come um, along, Montgomery. He he points to. Remember, I said it's a very short passageway to the south. That goes left and right. Yeah. Um, east and west, rather, because you're going to the south. Um, the doorway that is to the west, he points at that one and he says, through there. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to it and we'll, we'll do a Bertha. We'll run through the do run to the door and we'll look, but well, not run, but stealth to the door and listen and see what we can hear. Yes. Okay, give me some stealth checks. Oh, I'm loving the dice. 19. 14. Okay. Oh, I should probably roll for Montgomery, shouldn't I? <laughs> that Minus is a 19. Hobbling. All right! Look at the guy with the busted leg stealth faster <laughs> dead. Yeah, the, <laughs> the monk makes more noise on the ground. <laughs> than the guy, cranky guy with busted leg. I, and I'm wearing chainmail with a <laughs> yeah. with a door, <laughs> not a shield, a door. 
To be fair, and this was established earlier in the campaign, chainmail armor isn't just, oh, here's this link, here are these links of chain that we're just going to drape over you. Um, you wear cloth underneath, and you often have some type of leather or, or additional padded cloth over top of it, which minimizes the movement of the chain itself, so you make less noise. It's not like you're wearing wind chimes as you're marching through <laughs> off the battle. <laughs> <laughs> wind chimes. I'm going to use that later. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, you sort of stealth up to the door. Uh, the monk doesn't stealth very well, but oh well. Um, what was your roll again, Bertha? 14. 14, okay. So, you, you, you obviously make some noise. Um, apparently, your wind chime collection fell out of one of your pouches. Um, you, everyone's looks at you funny and you sort of apologize and put it back in your mind. Um, it's my first day. <laughs> so so this door um, it is in very similar shape to all the other doors since the attack. Um, it, it looks like it may have been moved since then. Like somebody tried to shove it back into place a little bit, but it's hard to tell. It might have just moved from the blast and settled back down to the spot. Mm. Uh, can I hear anything? I don't know. That oh, would require me. some type of perception check. Perception check. Oh, I'm loving the dice! Nice to begin. Seven. You hear a rhythmic thumping sound and then realize that it's your own heart beating because of how you've pressed your ear up to the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. I rolled a 19. You hear a rhythmic thumping sound and realize it's Bertha's heart beating. <laughs> <laughs> you right. also hear atoms creating molecular, molecular <laughs> bonds. <laughs> um, and a butterfly, which is intent on creating a tornado somewhere Whoa. thousands of miles away by flapping its wings. It knows that someday it'll manage to do it, Dag Nabbit, and it really, really hates those settlements in the Midwest. <laughs> All right, so we'll, it's an I'll, evil butterfly. It's a chaotic evil butterfly, um, possibly right, so. a warlock. But in any case, um, you do hear something on the other side of this door. Um, it is moving things. You think you hear at least one box getting knocked over, but you don't hear any dialogue. So you don't know what's on the other side for sure. Okay. I say we just open the door slowly. Um, uh, just a suggestion. I do have a crossbow, a light crossbow. I can take uh, off. No, my... remember your weapons were taken from you. Yep. Oh, that's right. Darn it. And yeah. you haven't, and you didn't look for a crossbow among no, you're bodies. Right. You're right. You may have found one if you had looked. Yeah, it's horrible right now. All right, so let's uh, let me open the door and let's see if I can go in quietly. Okay. Okay. I'll go in first. Um, so you're going to try to open the door quietly? Try to, yes. Try to. Okay. Uh, well, this door has seen better days, so I'm going to say your stealth check needs to be made at disadvantage. Uh, nine. <laughs> <laughs> I am upset with you because you beat me to it. I was going to have mine go a lot longer. Like, incredibly, impossibly long. Like, maybe take a breath and then continue. Um, so you open the door, and you see a kobold that is... Um, now, the previous lizard creatures that you encountered were all pretty much... They might have been wearing dirty loincloths or, or pants or something... Um, but the, otherwise, most of their armor was just their skin. Um, they're very scaly hides. Um, we're not up to pickaxe prevention standards, but it looked like they, they would survive casual attacks. Um, this kobold appears to be wearing armor, um, leather armor, and it has a strange-looking hat with a 
protuberance on the front of it with a lens and it's glowing and light is emitting from of it from from it i'm speaking properly um almost as if it's wearing a lantern on its head you realize it is wearing a lantern on its head we need to what's that I said, we need to take that candle. Yes. <laughs> You're not sure if it's a candle inside. You imagine the wax would be off-putting. Um, but but it's definitely wearing some type of light source on it. I didn't even realize... I didn't even realize that I was giving a light source to a cobalt. <laughs> oh. The, the references have become self-aware. Help. <laughs> Help me. Um, but it is in the process of rigging something to the ceiling in here. It is standing on top of a pile of boxes, which is why you heard one of the boxes falling over. And it is tying multiple vials to what appears to me be a homemade chandelier of sorts. Is there anything else around this kobold, like any additional creatures, or this is just this kobold and that's it? This kobold appears to be by itself. Um, there are some blood smears leading to a very familiar, at this point, looking hole in the floor. Um, but there are no corpses of any kind. Um, and the four of you, the three dwarves and the one kobold, appear to be the only living things within sight. And I'm assuming this kobold didn't hear me. Oh, it heard you. It's it, it, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it definitely heard you. Um, uh, it, it, its perception check was high enough to definitely pick up the sound of the door creaking. Um, <laughs> and that tried insult to injury. Um, it well, it it stopped. It still has its arms upraised. It's still holding one of these vials of black liquid in one clawed paw. And some type of string or sinew in the other one. And it, it's, it was in mid-process of tying this thing off. Um, and it's looking directly at you. And you're looking at it. And it's looking at you. And you're looking at it. And it's looking at you. And in this quiet moment of contemplation. Where it's possible people on both sides are questioning their life choices. How uh, how far away from it is it? Am I? Um, th this room is fairly small compared to the others. Um, it it's about. I should probably count. That would probably be the thing to do. Um, it's thirty feet by maybe forty feet, um, and it's about twenty feet away from you. So easily a move action. Um, but in this quiet moment where you're both looking at each other, that's when the door falls off its hinges completely and just goes thump, flat on the floor. <laughs> ah, so much for subtle. I'd say this is a good time to roll for initiative. Seventeen. Uh, where's my Again. 16. Yes. Sixteen plus one. Seventeen also. And Montgomery got a thirteen. And the Cobalt got a six. And wait, I didn't add the dex modifier. The Cobalt got a nine. Still in last place. But doing slightly better. Not that it matters. Um, so, the, the mighty duo of Bertha and Vassal get to go first. After you, sir. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh... Do I have to have shield bash as a feat or can I just use it? 
Um, I know improved shield bass I used to have to use as a feat. I would say that it is an improvised weapon at this point. Okay. Um, I want to run... Um, I want to... Describe what you want to do, and I'll tell you what role you need to make. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get from... get Close the distance uh, of 20 feet as fast as I po as possibly can, and I want to bash it this character with my shield hopefully the monk will follow suit right behind me uh, and follow up with something in it uh, immediately after my shield connects to this particular person okay. what i was hoping um, is you'll smash him towards me and then like i'll hit him <laughs> like a one-two punch so um let me describe this room a bit because um and this is on me i was not uh, perfectly clear on the dimensions of this room um this room has a fairly high ceiling, which is why the kobold needed to stack some boxes to, to start tying things to the ceiling. Uh, if you run straight forward, you will run through a pile of boxes. You would have to climb them in order to bash the kobold itself. Could I use acrobatics to jump for the boxes to get to him? You could. You're not sure the boxes would be able to stay balanced with two beings on top of them. Okay. So, so if I if I just come out to him and swing, am I good? I don't have to make any checks or go around. But I I, so I, I couldn't go straight through. I obviously have to go around. Um, with your strength of 18 and the rickiness of this box tower that it's created. You're not entirely sure the boxes would stop you. All right, let's go. They, they look fairly door-like. It's go time. So. It's go time. No, shield in front of me. Let's get this party started. Okay, then I'm going to say give me a strength check. It's an 18. That is fantastic. Um, give me a constitution save. Uh, plus three. 16. All right, so you are able to burst through these boxes like they're no one's business. They're definitely no one's business anymore unless you're the custodial staff. <laughs> um, and, and you are able to sort of hunker in and, and not take damage from the shrapnel that you yourself are causing. Uh, I'm going to have that kobold make a dex save, which it fails. Woohoo! Um, so suddenly finding now now there are kobolds. Now your players don't your characters don't know this, but players and viewers at home might want to know that there are certain kobolds that are occasionally born with wings um, as part of their draconic ancestry and whatnot. Um, this kobold is well. Now those those winged kobolds are usually looked down upon. With a bit of jealousy and spite. Um, so they don't really always consider having wings to be a good thing because while on one hand they're, they've been shown favor by their god, on the other hand, now everyone hates them for it. Like that kid that wrecks the grading curve on a test. <laughs> um, but even so, this kobold is wishing that it had wings at this point because it really can't stand on air. And it falls down. Now remember, it was still holding one of those vials. And the deck save was specifically to see how it would land in relation to this vial. If only it had a Red Bull. <laughs> Wait a few hundred years. Um, it lands on the vial. And... Do I roll for damage? Is the question. I'm gonna roll for damage. No, no, no. I'm. I'm I think I'm going to. No, I already did save. I did that save. Um. It's never a good thing. The DM says I need more dice. Yeah. I would like the dwarves to make a dex save. Okay. Fourteen. 
14. Um, four? <laughs> okay, so, um, Vassal, you take four points of damage from Cobalt Shrapnel. Oh, crap. Um, it, some of it might be bone, a lot of it is not. But it's definitely gotcha. Cobalt parts flying at you. Birth is going to take two points of damage. Okay. Montgomery just casually hobbles to the side and avoids all the shrapnel. <laughs> he rolled a 19. Well, no, no, not 19. He rolled an 18 on his deck. Set. Wow. That's, oh, without, that's without any modifiers. It's a straight up 18. We're keeping him around. I, I, you know what? This is a throwaway character, and I kind of want to give him a backstory at this point. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, Montgomery, so the unkillable dwarf. <laughs> this the this room quiet has, unkillable dwarf. <laughs> this room has now been painted in a Mr. Bean with the stick of dynamite and a gallon of paint method. Um <laughs> but it is currently clear. What do you think the shield bash was kind of over the top? Just kind of just throwing myself at it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, technically you went under, not over. That's true. That's true. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, there is a door to the north that Montgomery is already heading towards. All right, let's go ahead and follow him. Yeah, let's follow him. Okay. Let him go first at this point. Okay. Um, and this passageway, it goes, it, it, the door is to the north, but the passageway then goes around the room and curves south. So it was a, no, a north end door to go south. Um, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason for these, this, this map's creation, other than maybe... The dwarves that were carving it out were, were following various scenes of, of ores. Or maybe it was defensive because someone trying to invade might get lost trying to go yeah. through the various corridors. I'm so, trying to develop this on a, on a piece of paper over and I'm, I'm like, I should throw it away. There's no I, need to I can I can share the map with you later, but I, okay. <laughs> um, I, I hesitate to because... Um, your main character might be visiting this location soon. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you, you meet up with another intersection that goes east-west. Montgomery has you turn... He, he's not totally stupid. Um, he, he sort of has you leading, but he lets you know which way to go when you get to any intersection. Um, so you go west, you get to another intersection that can go north and south, you had to go north, that immediately turns west again, and after a run of about 30 feet, you see this particular tunnel open up to the main hallway. Alright. Can I make a perception check? Uh, you most certainly can. Six. No, nine. Sorry. Uh, nine as well. Okay. So you think there might be something in this tunnel, but it might be coming from various side buildings. It might be coming from other corridors. You know that you're not alone in the complex, obviously. Um, but even your dark vision doesn't show you any movement within 60 feet. Uh, you know because this is the main hallway. Uh, if you if you turned to the north, you would actually get to the main audience chamber for the local magistrate for this particular settlement. Um, but all along this main corridor are various shops and stands, and there's a second floor that's mostly domiciles. Um that have been carved into the stone. Th this is the main living and working area if you're not digging or sorting supplies and whatnot. I, th 
I think um, we just want to get out of here, don't we? That would be to the south. Yeah. Um, you, you've got a decent walk. You're talking multiple turns um, of walking. Yeah. Uh, even at full movement, which you can't do unless you leave Montgomery yeah. behind. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I think... I mean, Bertha just wants to get to the entrance and just get out of this place. I mean, it's obvious there's been an attack... Most of, the, most of our fellow dwarves are dead, so I mean, uh, I think she just wants to get out of here. I'm, ag- I'm in agreement. So let's let's find the the best way to get, or the, the, the fastest way to get out of here. Yeah, that would be south. Yeah. All right, let's head there. Matter of fact, you are familiar enough with this particular area because this is where you've spent most of your time. Yeah. Um, in the settlement, even the dwarves that work in the area come back here after their shift is done. That you you know right where you are, you know how far you have to go to get to the main entrance. Yeah. Um, you don't need Montgomery as a guide anymore. Okay. Um, but you're gonna have to give me some stealth checks. All right. Uh, okay. First stealth check. Oh God. Uh, twelve. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, plus one. Thirteen. Okay. So thirteen and. 23. You are more silent than the wind. <laughs> I'm not breaking it this time. Um, okay, so both of you are fairly good so far as dwarves are concerned about being sneaky. Uh, now remember, this is also the main marketplace for the settlement. So there's various shops and stalls and whatnot. Um, there's a few, few food trucks. Um, you could get a burrito here if, if people weren't all dead. Um, <laughs> there's taco trucks on every corner. <laughs> and a Starbucks. Um, there always is. There, there's a Starbucks that is right across from the Starbucks, <laughs> actually. Um, they're different franchisee owners, and they're constantly throwing things at each other across the way. Um it's actually a sport to dodge the various like coffee grounds and in, in small <laughs> bags that are dripping coffee liquids but whatever um so montgomery comes around a corner as he's hobbling and his his leg the injured one sort of catches on um a piece of rope or twine or something that's holding up a tarp um why you would need a tarp in a cavern to cover your stall isn't quite known by everyone but whatever uh but in the process his foot catches on it and rather than sort of like try to untangle he just pulls harder so it breaks out of the, the 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 peg that was holding it in place breaks out and it lands and the cart knocks over. Apparently it was a pots and pans salesman's cart. Um, but they seem to have a good side business on selling drum cymbals. Oh god. And triangles. And and wind chimes made to order. <laughs> um, chimes by Charlie. <laughs> the the sound is not unlike what you would get. Um, if you took uh, a Pier 1 and turned it on its side, <laughs> uh, with, with, of course, the one pot lid, after everything else happens, that one pot lid that sort of just rolls along the ground for a while and so it sort of wobbles and goes in a little circle and then the wobbles get faster and faster and faster, oscillating until it just like, and it stops. And then everything is dead silent. This is no bueno. And, you, and, you, hear, and you hear Montgomery say, Vassal, I told you to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a two on his stealth check. <laughs> oh, I thought he rolled a one. <laughs> Uh, a two is slow enough that it wasn't going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> no bueno. Oh, man. 
All right, look around. Do we you have new friends. Nothing. You currently see nothing except let's for just... Montgomery, who's hobbling as fast as his little legs can carry him. Let's let, let's, yeah, keep, let's going, keep on man. going. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, keep on going. Um, I'm gonna move you on the map. Okay, so you come up to another familiar looking hole in the ground that's almost dead center in the middle of this hallway. Um, but you don't see any cobalts near it. I'm just trying to be stealthy, so the stealth check? Uh, you can give me another stealth check if you want. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, keeps on getting lower and lower. 11? Okay. Um, you don't step on the pan that, that rolled off. <laughs> you see it on the ground. You see it, and you, and you carefully walk around it. You don't, you, you almost step over it, and then as your foot's in the air, you're sort of like, nah, I'm gonna walk around this. <laughs> um... And, and I get a much better roll for Montgomery this time. Okay, so I'll move you again. You can give me another check if you want. Okay. I have to remember to keep going back to Discord after every time I move you, because otherwise I'll say something and you won't hear a word I say. Oh, yeah, better. 17. 16. And that's a 19 for Montgomery. He's, he, he had his one failure. And he's like, okay, I, I, I learned my mistake. Don't knock over all the noisy crap. <laughs> I, I got that now. I, 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 I took a note. I wrote it down. Um, granted, I wrote it on my palm in charcoal, and I'm kind of sweating. So it actually says, don't noise. <laughs> um, I think that's a noise. Is that an S? It's kind of, uh, never mind. Um, and you see another hole in the ground. Uh, head and end. What was that? Tommy broke up a little bit. Uh, we're heading towards the entrance, so yes. I think we want to care about more holes in the ground. No, I'm not worried about holes in the ground. Yeah. I'm going. Uh, I want to just uh, take a what, quick look your, at the hole. Just what, to... What's your passive perception? Uh, 12. Oh, sorry. Both of you. Oh, uh... Just a 12. Um, just, uh... Wait, passive perception? Where do I find Pass that? It says on your main list. I'll show you. Yours would be higher because perception is wisdom-based and you have a wisdom of 15. Yeah. But in, in any case... Um, I, I, I can fake it either way. Um, by the way... Oh, um, I'm sorry, 12. I see it. I see it. Perception is 12. What's your passive perception is one of the questions that is actually an answer in Jeopardy under the category of things you never want to hear your DM ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is the 200-point question. Uh, the 100-point one is how many hit points do you have? <laughs> or how many points do you have left all right i have five left i have nine left okay you, you hear the pitter patter of many many feet. run oh, <laughs> <hell>. run <laughs> okay so you start running i'm assuming that's yeah. a double move yeah yes i just run for the entrance I was kind of assuming you were double moving anyway, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so the rumbling gets louder. You leave Montgomery behind. He says some very yeah. colorful things. Um, you're, <laughs> you're not sure if he's shouting encouragement to you or cursing you for leaving him behind. He might be oscillating between the two of them. Um, Come on, old man. How do, how do I describe this? 
Okay, so you know those holes you passed. Yeah. Um. It's they're kind of like reverse drains. At this point, a drain would have things going down into them. Um, gravity would just be pulling them through, and eventually it would all go away. Um, so imagine that effect, but backwards. And instead of liquid, it's kobolds. Oh. What in the heck? How many fucking things are down there? Run, guys. Yeah, we're running. Uh, now, you know this not because... Um, you know, it's not because you're looking behind you a whole lot, but because you're passing another hole in front of you. And that's got the same effect going on. Oh, no. Um, you do turn to look behind you, and you see Montgomery go down. Um, he's pretty much... He is wearing a kobold coat. <laughs> swinging the mace that he's been using as a walking stick. Taking a few out with him. But the sheer weight of them pulls him down. Oh, man. And at this point, I would like each of you to give me three constitution checks in a row. Thank gosh I have bonuses. 18. Fourteen. Sixteen. And uh, fourteen again. Twenty-two. Okay, so... You feel some sharp pinpricks. Um, There'll be no more... Uh... And... <laughs> Bertha... You failed... You're saving throw twice. Oh. Um, the world sort of starts to get dimmer and slower, and you go down like a sack uh. of potatoes. Uh. Um, Vassal, you passed three times in a row. You got three darts sticking out of your face. Uh. One of them right on the end of your nose. It, comically, <laughs> like... it's like, it's, it's not straight on it's sort of off like <laughs> tilted off to the side just a little bit just enough to be comical <laughs> your, your nose has gone numb but but uh, otherwise it, you're, you're like ace ventura <laughs> wait but you're still going you're still going um give me three more constitution saves Okay. Let me move you a little bit closer to the entrance. Just him, right? Well, I was using one icon to represent all three of you, but oh, at this okay. point, it's only him. Okay. Uh, 20. 16. Fifteen. You might make it out. Um... <laughs> The, the kobolds that, that came out of the one hole that was in front of you, that was their movement, and you just sort of, like, ran over them. Um, so you are on the other side of this hole, and you don't see any other holes in front of you, as far as your dark vision goes. But you know that you're maybe two turns away from the main gate. Okay. So give me, give me three more okay. constitution saves because you are being chased by some kobolds with blowguns. Uh, 23. Nine. 17. So it turns out the magic number is, I think that was the, the ninth dart that hit you. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> um, and nine is just too many. Um, the the, the, the magic number was also nine because I think that was the, the the one you made that was a fail. Yeah. Um, you had to hit fifteen or higher each time. Oh yeah, I, I hit one. Um, nine, so, nine. so 
like each time one of these darts hits you in a different part of your body, it starts to go numb, and you're sort of like running, but now one arm doesn't work, and now the other arm doesn't work. Oh, you're sort of flailing. You drop your pickaxe, and then then your leg starts to go numb, so you're sort of hopscotching your way <laughs> forward. Um, like, and then finally, like the last dart hits you right, right in the back of the neck, oh. and, you, and you go down, and the world goes dark. Oh. And that is the end of the adventure. Oh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. We almost got almost, it. Almost, man. Almost. If you had, if you had passed this one and one more, you would have gotten to the main entrance. No, I rolled a seventeen or a eighteen, which is good, and then I rolled a four. Now, mind you, again, I have a plus five to my constitution, so I'm good. But I can't. I mean, come on! I can't, I can't do a jack from rolling a four for crying out loud. I, I'm I'm honestly surprised with how far you got. Um, okay. Now, don't delete these characters yet. Okay. It was fun. Because you did... I didn't say you died. Yeah, exactly. I said the world went dark. Yeah. yeah. So th there may be some time in the future where you, we get to meet Vassal and Bertha again. That'd be cool. They were cool. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this also helped to shed some light on exactly what occurred um, yeah. at Kusan first. Um, in the period of time shortly before our wonderful uh, main cast of characters arrived. Well, some of them. Um, now, Eric, I don't know if you listened to last week's episode. I did not get a chance to know. I apologize. Okay, so um, just as a heads up, um, I didn't feel like NPCing your character. I'm done NPCing player characters if I can, if I have any chance to avoid it. Sure. I understand. So, so you and well, not you, because you were off having fun. But um, you could say that about Obaim too. Obaim and Ari, since those were the two characters where their players were AFK, um, spent the day at the inn while everyone else went into Husan to investigate. Um, mostly because the night before, um, the inn that you were in sells a particular brand of gnome brewed alcohol referred to as Gear Grinder, gotcha. named after the, the second generation proprietor um, of the brewery that's right across the road from the inn. And um, Fenix was going to drink it. He bought it and he was going to try it, but I I RP'd Obame as mumbling something about dwarven constitution and dwarves should be, try, should be the ones to try this stuff out first to, to protect those with weaker constitutions. Um, he downs half the bottle, <laughs> sort of smacks his lips a little bit and savors the aftertaste a little bit and then falls over backwards. <laughs> it was um, great. Yes. Um, Gear Grinder has a label on it that says that in addition to being a fine alcoholic beverage, um, it is also suitable for sterilizing wounds, stripping paint, and removing stumps. All the way it should be. And apparently a half bottle will take out a dwarf. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. So, so that's how I RP you not being there. Especially with Obame's constitution. That's, that's, that's some junk right there. Well, it's gnomish brood. That's good stuff. Yes. Um, dwarven air can, ale can be strong, but dwarves like drinking a lot, so they're not necessarily going to brew something that's going to take them out with only half a bottle. Gotcha. That's true. Yeah. Uh, your grinder's actually meant to be watered down before you drink it, but they, they sort of didn't tell you that. You, you might want to have a word with the proprietor because you had a hangover <laughs> the, the day after. It might have been your first hangover ever. Okay, well, that was fun. That was, that was really fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's our adventure for tonight. Um, now, since this is a recording that I do put out there online, is there any way that you, is there anything you want to plug, to put it this way, before we end the recording for tonight? go to bed uh, if you guys also like listening to stuff that talks about um, hardware uh, computer hardware or just hardware for that matter um, any type of open world gaming pretty much uh, MMOs or anything go ahead and check out votekick.com 
uh, has a podcast with uh, me, Synergy, and Root from um, Hearthcast. Uh, we do a fun little podcast there. Definitely check it out. Yes, I've definitely been including links to Vote to Kick in the show notes each week, but I know that most people don't read show notes. <laughs> um, so I figured we should include that in the audio version also. Uh, Tom, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, not really. Uh, on Twitter, and a Bolthra, B-O-L-T-H-R-A. Okay. And I put my stuff out there already. If, if you're listening to this, you've probably already been to my website because how did you get this? Um, but I will say um, one plug I'd like to give is for the Extra Life charity drive that's been going on. Um, the one that I wanted to watch the most was going on while we were recording, so I'll be watching that after the fact. Um, uh, the one that's run by Chris Perkins with Ed Greenwood and Patrick Rothfuss as party members, uh, which is pretty awesome. Their goal for the event was $75,000 at the time that we're recording this uh, the Dungeons and Dragons team has raised $105,000 wow, over awesome. that that's awesome um, and, and all that money goes to buying oh, essentially buying things like games and, and stuff for kids that are in hospitals which is super awesome because hospitals are incredibly boring and incredibly yeah. nerve-wracking and, and playing games video games and other kinds of games is one of the ways that you can keep your mind off of that i know from experiences that are a bit too close to home all right so that's the show thank you everyone and good night Bye-bye. thank you bye